today I want to share with you on the subject, no controversy, no controversy, okay? And so we're going to start um, Let's go to Luke chapter 18. Luke chapter 18. Uh, Luke is the third gospel where the accounts of Christ's life on earth were recorded. Luke chapter number 18. Do you like it that we read the Bible a lot here? Do you like that we are... Yeah. Okay, we're not going to change that, you know. So just, yeah, we, we just put it up. You can read it, I can read it, and, and then I say a couple of things tied to it, and hopefully we get it right. We don't want to get it wrong, but the more of it that we have, I think the better. Amen. All right, Luke chapter 18. Um, let, me, let me read from verse 1. Then he spoke a parable to them that men always ought to pray and not to lose heart. So the purpose of this parable that he was speaking to them was to encourage them that we are not to what? Lose heart. Somebody say lose heart. Yeah. Uh, the times we're in, I don't know if there's any time in the world where people wouldn't have lost heart or where there is no losing of hearts. But... It just seems that there's an acceleration of evil and trouble. This is a time where, in the past, when there's a war, people just say, oh, there's a war in the Middle East, Israel, this, that. But this one will affect everybody. This one happening right now will affect everybody. Those people who are like, oh, you know, go and fight them, love the bombs, because the bombs are not landing here. Well... If the, even if the bombs don't land here, we're going to have an economic bomb. It's going to happen. The reason is that the players in this particular conflict are many more. It's becoming a world war. So there will be repercussions, particularly for the fact that people have refused to listen to God. The, the governments of the world have become so anti-God, anti-Christ, and as we see in the book of Revelation, when the judgments come, when people sin, lead them into trouble, instead of repenting, they just say, no, we are going to continue to do it. It's actually an anti-God stance. Read some chapter 2. So that will cause the people who are in the middle, who feel like, you know, they just want to get on with their lives, to begin to lose heart. So there will be things that are happening that will cause men to lose heart. Some people don't want to send their children to school anymore because they don't understand what is going on. So, he spoke a parable to them that men ought, or always ought to pray and not lose heart. Which means the solution to not losing heart is that we continue to pray. We'll see why in a bit. But remember, we're talking about no controversy. Okay, let's go. So it says, verse 2, saying, There was in a certain city a judge who did not fear God nor regard man. In our world today, there are judges who do not fear God nor regard man. It was in this country, for the first time in the history, known history of the world, that a judge in Canada said, You are more than welcome to decide, a group of judges, you are more than welcome. When you have a child, you can say, no gender on the birth certificate. It started here. Because the judges do not fear God, nor regard man. They don't care. So there was a certain city. <laughs> Just like there's a certain country. And there are many countries in the world today where there are judges who do not what? Mm -hmm. Not a God man. Verse 3. Now there was a widow in that city. It's interesting. This, they say widow in this case. <laughs> a widow comes up again. Not a family person, a man with a wife and kids. Not a wealthy person. But a widow. 
And she came to him saying, get justice for me from my adversary. A widow has an enemy. How can a widow have an enemy? That's the world we live in. And he would not for a while, but after what he said within himself, though I do not fear God, nor God. so even the judge knew within himself. There are people who know what they are doing. Are you listening to what I'm saying? There are people who know what they are doing. I hate your Jesus. I hate your God. I, you see people saying that on social media. They say it. And they look for a way. A bishop, a bishop was preaching the other day in Australia, and they went and somebody went and a 16-year-old went and stabbed him. Yeah. So <laughs> Though I do not fear God nor regard man. So he knew. Hmm? Yet because this widow troubles me, I will avenge her. So it means that there are people who when they pray, God can use their prayer to move those who do not fear him or regard man. Verse 5. Yet because this widow troubles me, I will avenge her. Lest by her continual coming, she weary me. In his own natural state, God used all those things around to perfect a purpose for the woman. Then the Lord said, hear what the unjust judge said. And shall God not avenge his own elect who cry out day and night to him, though he bears long with them? Here is the problem, verse 7. Read it with me again. Let's go. And shall God not, what? Avenge his own elect who cry out, what? Day. Aha. This is the problem. The elect don't cry out day and night. We are fine with 10 a.m. to 11.30, finish. <laughs> Anything else, ah, 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 ah. It's, it will get in, it will, it will disturb baseball. It, it will disturb basketball. Anything else, Netflix. We have our schedules. You know why our schedules are perfect and nothing can touch our schedules because it's, things are okay. No? When you put your card into the ATM, it will count exactly what you want. <laughs> yeah? When the time for promotion comes, you draw it to, you know, so everything is just as it ought to be. If there's a slight shift in our country today, 5% in the economy, just 5%, because our economy is a credit economy. We're just on the edge. And our government is weak, wickedly borrowing the future away. Just 5% shock. And all the schedules will what? Fall apart. People have no idea how close the so-called developed nations are from the edge of a cliff. And here are the one, uh, we are the ones who, are, who have the biggest mouths to tell God we can change his laws. Okay. Are you following me? <laughs> okay. So we have a responsibility. The church has a responsibility. It says, my house shall be called the house of prayer. Verse 8, I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man comes, will he really find faith on the earth? Because he needs to use your faith to walk on the earth. If you don't have faith, build up your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Spirit. That's why some of us pray in tongues. There are many churches who don't know those things. They don't understand it. There are people here who think we are crazy. They, don't, they think we are... The Bible says God takes the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. If those who have been ahead and they have said, oh, those things don't work, if they had done it right, their own churches would not be where it is today. It would not be as dead as it is. Because when you reject the Holy Spirit and the power of the Holy Spirit, after a while, you'll just be doing churchianity. You just be a club, no power. You cannot pray fervently without the Holy Spirit. And the Bible said the effectual fervent prayer of the righteous available. What is fervent prayer?
You know why we pray like that? We've suffered, that's why. When you are suffering and you don't know where help will come from, after a while, you become fervent. You become desperate for a miracle. And I told you, Canada is coming to that place of desperation. You know, some of us are called to stay on a certain road that may not be very popular until one day people say, oh, he has been saying it. But there are some few who have tapped into it. They've recognized it and they are, they are presently enjoying it. But it's good so that when everybody begins to recognize that this is what we need to do, there's already a foundation upon which we can build. That's why I don't change my message. Because I've seen a little bit, a glimpse of the future. We are coming to a time when, when we pray, we will pray on our finances. We will pray on our food. We will pray on our water. He says, I will bless your bread and your water. It will, uh, our prayers will become the most important and the most valued resource. You see people who are atheists coming to Jesus, agnostics, they will say, now I want to follow Jesus. My life is better when I am following you. Uh -huh. <laughs> so it's coming, but we will win in the end in Jesus' name. Yeah. Verse 9. He spoke this parable to some who trusted in themselves that they were righteous and despised others. That's why he spoke this parable. Like you, think, you think you are righteous. But let me tell you something. And he talked about the unjust judge and how the unjust judge was moved by God because of a widow's prayer, because of a widow's continual coming. God says, continue to come. For those of you who say on Sunday, I want to be in church. If I'm not scheduled for work, if I'm not I must be there. Some of you have decided, even in your job, you tell them, Sunday I have to go. I have to go. You can't stop a Muslim on Friday when it's time for prayer. Even if it's 40,000 feet, they will get off the seat, put their mat on the floor, yeah. and, and start praying. So you see, he spoke so that those who trusted themselves that they were righteous and despise others. So I'll, I'll stop there. Two parables could join each other. From one he went to the other, talking about the two men who went to the temple to pray. One a Pharisee and the other a tax collector. The Pharisee stood and prayed with himself. He was talking about how he was righteous and all of that, but there's somebody else. Let me leave that for another day. How do we now connect this to no controversy? In verse 8, look at verse 8. He says, I tell you, he will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man comes, will he really find faith? Will he find that people have been waiting and having faith, that their faith has not shifted? That this, this faith is how he avenges the elect. This faith is how he brings to pass things in our lives. So here's the problem. People don't know that. Now you need to know that. The enemy's target in your life is your faith. Your faith is your spiritual currency. The Bible didn't say so. I said that. I learned it from the scriptures. So let me teach you what I learned. Now, you need to think of it very well because most of us have definitions that are finite. We need definitions that are expanded. Let me give you an example. When you hear currency, what do you think of? Money. But a currency only means current. A river also has a current. Currents, current means uh, uh, being in stead with time. Walking in time. If your account is current, it means it's not, it's not behind. You bring it up to date. So if our faith is lacking, we will not be up to date, we will not be current and concurrent with what heaven is saying and what heaven is doing part-time. 
So we need to build up our most holy faith, according to Jude. Build up your faith. Why do you need to build up your faith? So that, 1 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16, let's go. So that you never lose sight of this truth. Hmm? Verse 15, it says, I write so that you may know how you ought to conduct yourself in the house of God. But then he says something that is so valuable. It is indeed the foundation of our faith. It says, um, which is the church of the living God? The pillar and ground of the truth. The church in the world today is the pillar and ground of what? Of the truth. This is the problem Friends, this is the problem. If the church is, if the church loses its way when it comes to truth, God will have to find another group of people and create another church. Do you understand what I'm saying? Because the truth cannot be compromised. The truth cannot be, it, the truth is the truth. It cannot change. And so the battle that we are in in the world today is one for what is truth. And you as a believer, you and I must know the truth. First of all, we must know the person who is the truth. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Now, every other thing he says must then be true because he's the embodiment of truth. Jesus Christ. Some people get angry now if you don't call him Yeshua. They, they said, you know, you know, if I call you something else, not Andaza, will you be happy? God is not like you, you know. So they start a crusade, and they are so busy with that. Actually, a lot of people in America, it's like, oh, people are so bored over there that any little thing, oh, they are moving in this direction now. Give them under three years. Oh, they are moving in this direction now. I always say to people, I found something online the other day. It's very interesting. He saved you with the name Jesus. Then later on, you found out his name was Yeshua. Now you are condemning people. You see what I mean? Some people got saved in the church. They say church is not useful anymore. Now they have church in their basement. Because they now have a revelation. Church has to only be in the house. They saw a scripture. They didn't see the other scripture. We said they went to the temple. And the other scripture, we said they are in. They take, just take one. Don't get into these controversies because the Bible calls them endless genealogies. <laughs> huh? You hear what I said? Say it with me. Endless, endless. Genealogies. genealogies. Yes. You, a genealogy, you don't know where it started, you don't know where it ends. And then you enter and you are continuing the argument. You will become weary and old. You have gray hairs when you're not supposed to have gray hairs. Because you enter something that doesn't, it, it has no end. So don't waste your time with that. Just love Jesus. Follow him and he will show you the way. Like the song we sang earlier. I love that song. Amen? My life is better with Christ, not with Coke. You know Coke used to have an advert, Coca-Cola, about how things go better with Coke. <laughs> There's too much sugar in it, by the way. <laughs> All right. So, where were we? Yes. So, it, verse 16 says, Without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifested in the flesh, justified in the spirit, seen by angels, preached among the Gentiles, believed on in the world, received up in, in glory. So, there was an interregnum. In time, God sent his son into the world to resolve an issue that could never have been resolved on our own. It's a spiritual thing. It's not uh, the way we see natural things. No, it's all spiritual. God created Adam and Eve for fellowship with him. And the enemy came and scuttled the whole thing. They believed and they went against God and all their offspring. I, I've shown you something before. In uh, Let's look at Genesis chapter 5. Let me show you something. Genesis 5. And then we'll come back here. Genesis 5. Genesis 5, um, uh -huh. verse 1. Read it with me. This is the book of the genealogy of Adam. In the day that God created man, I can't hear you. He made him in the likeness. Stop there. So God made Adam in the likeness of God. His character had no sin. His nature was not sinful. That's what it meant. Okay? He made him in the likeness of God. When you look at the word likeness, you think he's saying, oh, he was just like God. What he meant was he was just like God in nature. 
likeness in nature. All right? Verse 2. Let's read again. One, two, go. He created them male and what? Female. Nothing in between. All right? And blessed them and called them what? Mankind in the day they were created. In Canada, we have people kind because people don't like the Bible. You see, it was our prime minister who used that word some years ago. And people, you know, so it's all, all these things is an attempt in the universities, all these places. It's an attempt to, to, to it's an anti-Christ spirit, right? So, uh, in verse 3, look at what it says. It says, and then Adam lived 130 years and what? Begot a son. In what? That's where the trouble started. His own life. Now, let's go back. So, those of you who are scientists here, this is the Bible. It's a very scientific book. Watch this. You don't see Pythagoras' theorem here, but you can find it. At, 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 listen, watch this. Look at verse 1. He said, this is the book of what? Genealogy. You know there are genetic scientists today researching on genes. When they see this, some of them go, oh, this is in the Bible too. That's how people get saved. They start searching. and oh, what, what, what Genealogy, what is it? And then after his own likeness, they go to the Greek, they go to the Hebrew. They start, start finding that there are things deeper. What is happening here is that the nature of Adam, after he fell, changed. And so when he started having children with Eve, all those children had a nature that was his. Just like today, do you know, some people, the way they talk, you can trace it back to their family years and years ago. Even some health issues, they say it's hereditary. It's their DNA, it's their genes, it's their whatever. So, we find that Adam, from, you know, after he fell, the, he gave birth after his own likeness. That's where the problem started. So let's go back and continue our connection to the mystery of godliness. I hope I can deliver everything today. So 1 Timothy 3. So God was manifested in the flesh. Adam was in the flesh, giving birth to, in the flesh, like him. God had to resolve the issue because the sin nature was perpetuated. Let me, let me tell you what the sin nature is like. The sin nature must sin. The sin nature must behave in a certain manner. Um, you know, I've, I, have you heard this, this um, thing about, you know, all the animals were going up the hill because there was a flood coming. They could sense it. And then the man was also going up with the animals. And the snake said, look, I cannot go up as quickly as the others. Can you give me a ride? The man says, no, I won't because you will bite me. The snake says, I promise not to bite you. And the man picks up the snake, puts him on his shoulder. As soon as they get to the top of the hill, the snake <clears throat> gives him a bite. He said, why did you bite me? He said, well, because it's my nature. I know I promised you, but my nature fails me. I have to bite you. Now, I know you have, some people have pet snakes that don't bite them, or they have pet snakes they have trained. I don't know how you do that. But that snake in that story, his nature is to bite. <laughs> so the nature, humans, we must sin. And the sin advances to a point where the earth begins to complain. God said, I heard the cries. I heard the cries. The, the, in the time of Noah, the Bible said they could only think evil, imagine evil continually. And that's where the world is going. To the point where now we are what? Imagining evil continually. I have read some things here in the news, not here, in the newspapers, online. I'm telling you, you don't want to see. Oh, my goodness. Oh, so, last two weeks ago, in a school... And I'm going to round off with this mystery of godliness. Watch this. In a school, because these are the things that are happening. Some people are saying, I don't think God exists anymore because of what they are seeing with their eyes. So there are children in that school who identify as furries, that they're animals. Have you heard of that fad now? It's very... So they go to the school and they tell the teacher, I am a cat. In America and in Canada. And God help us. And then... The teacher will provide a 
a litter box for the student, you are shaking your head, is happening right now. Some of our children in this church are seeing it with their eyes. Am I right or wrong? Yes. Those of you who have children in, in public school, they are, you are seeing it. So they provide a litter box for a human being. So what happened was the children who identify as animals have now created a club. And they went around, because they are furries, they've taken on the nature of the animal. And so they were biting their classmates. <laughs> you have no idea what's happening, right? You better open your eyes. This is why people don't pray. Because they don't even know what's happening until it comes to your door, uh, right in your, your, your yard. Your cousin, your relatives, are now they now have a child who is identifying as a furry and he has a, a, a tail going around. And it comes to your own children's birthday with a tail in your house. And you are a member of Pastor Andaza's church. Then you say he has been saying this. Now you are coming for emergency prayer. You better start praying now. The world is crazy. They have tails. They go to school with the tails. They identify as forests. These children, you want to hear the story? You want me to finish it? These children were biting other children in school. This happened two weeks ago. If you want the reference, I can request for it to be sent to you by text so you don't think I'm just making these things up. When I put things on Facebook, sometimes people will attack me and say, you know, Pastor Andaz, I just preach the gospel. I say, shut your mouth. <laughs> you have no understanding. I have a responsibility. You are living. People are they are uncomfortable because they don't want to talk about these things. That is how you are uncomfortable until you die in a place and your own generation is lost forever. They say you are coming for your kids. You thought they were joking? So these children were biting their classmates. <laughs> and the they went to report to the teachers. And the teachers said they were not accommodating. And the children walked out. Grade 6 children walked out of the school. There are pictures on the internet. Walked out of the school. It's no lie. How can little children be staging a walkout? People don't know that there have been contracts on children for a long time. See, because the devil loves little children for sacrifices. And people think, oh, and as a, here you come again. What kind of sacrifice? It's happening in Canada. You think, you think I'm talking about only taking children and putting them on and burning them? No. Once you destroy the innocence of a child, you've sacrificed them on the altar of Baal. And the, <laughs> the teachers were supporting to this moment. I don't even know if anything has changed. You will see homeschooling will explode. People will say, you know what? If it's only $3,000 we get a month, we will manage on that. What people eat will reduce. We've been fooled for a long time. Go to Tim Hortons. Uh, you have seven things to choose from. And see the little children. I don't want that one. I want the red one. I want the blue one. It's the same thing. It's an illusion of choice. And while they are making other things where you have no choice. You remember COVID? Uh-huh. If you don't get the, you will not walk. That is how they are going to do it one day. If you don't get this mark, you will not eat. Those are just rehearsals. I'm not against vaccines. I'm just against forcing people to take a vaccine. Because aspirin may be good for me, while it's not good for somebody else. We know that that to be a scientific fact, biologically. So where did they suddenly find out that it, it's one size fits all? So quickly. Some people said it cannot happen. The world cannot be. You, you, just, there are no people. Oh, no. Satan rules the world. But the Bible says it is God's, right? Uh -huh. But he's the ruler of the age. There's an age, a time band. Some people don't like this kind of messages. But honestly, I don't know where else you will hear it. CNN. Wikipedia, internet, where else would you hear it if not the church? Because the church is the pillar of truth, the ground and the pillar of truth. Okay, let me give you some good news. Because that is bad news. And it's happening everywhere. Yeah. I went to the airport 
on my way back from a trip recently. I've never seen that before. I just saw. Right there, I just finished doing my number, number one, and I turned to wash my hand, and right there, there was feminine products for me, in case I just, you know, I can just decide right there that I'm a woman <laughs> and use all those things. I take the tampon and start looking for a place to put it. Is that... Is, And it's going to increase. It's going to increase. It's going to increase. If you are a man, you, come. Come here. Yes, I know you are taller than me, so I've taken a position. So I can ask this fellow, what is this guy? Is he a man or a woman? You don't know. We don't know. How can you know? Who are you to say he's a man? What, what authority do you have to say is this is a man? How do you know? Are you a man? I'm a man. How do we know? <laughs> because you have this. This can be grown in the laboratory now. Do you, you see what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. Are you pregnant? No. You are not pregnant. You see? That is, you have to ask him if he's pregnant. Can he be pregnant? No. No. Is he built, to be pregnant? Is he built or designed to be pregnant? No. By the one who made him. But now we can manufacture and put in Nigeria, we call it gem. Beer, beer, beer. And it will grow and put this thing on him, put everything, make it this like that, and then. That's it. You're seeing it everywhere. Thank you, sir. This is a man. Yes. You know you are a man. You are a man. And let me, let me tell you, what I'm saying now, some people will so hate me for what I've just said. Including Christians, they will say, leave them alone. I'm not talking to them. I'm talking to my people. So that my people will not go that way. Because my understanding is that the world will advance. You know, if a car has 100 kilometers power, the car these people are riding is 250 miles an hour towards destruction and eternal damnation. Satan has his own view of how the world should look like. No male, no female. Children should not be born after nine months. There will be a factory. You see that movie where stocks bring the babies? Uh huh. You go to a place where there's a lab. They produce baby there. They get semen from the men and eggs from the women. They put it together. They put it in an incubator, and the babies are produced. They are on their way there now. So two people who have been changed, androgynous, they have no sex, no male, no female, no nothing. You don't know what any one of them is. They, are, they, they call them trans, uh, what they call them? They are, yeah, oh, man. I, I, I'm confused. I don't know. The name is, there are so many names. And the, the, the Bible says our God is not the author of confusion. God is not the author of confusion. So a time is coming, Christians, will ha you will find it as a Christian, you, you need to be connected to God to navigate the world. And we will be. That's why we have to be deeper with Jesus. You won't die before your time, so you will be alive and, but you will succeed. So, why have I said all this? Because the enemy's attack is to make sure when all these things are happening, you will begin to think that the, the uh, godliness on the earth, according to the Bible, is a controversy and a mystery. Do you see what I'm saying? Because anyone who believes in all that tribe, Anyone who believes in all of those things, because life is about belief systems. So you have a six-year-old child who has already changed into an androgynous. He doesn't have any sex. And one day he just decided at the age of 19, I'm now a tiger. And he dresses like a tiger and can't get a job. Or gets a job and he's the only one who must not be touched, comes in and is barking. Woo, 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 woo. No, tigers don't bark. What do they do? They roar. <laughs> See, it's, it's even so, we, it, it, it's, we have to find, to try to navigate. So, <laughs> this is what is being attacked. This is what is being attacked. So that 
you will never feel or think or able to reason that God was manifested in the flesh, justified in the spirit, read it with me, seen by angels, preached among the Gentiles, believed on in the world, received on glory. Because you can believe on anything else. As far as it's not this, it's okay. And that's why we're, the, 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 our nation has been con, con, conditioned for that. Any other religion or faith is acceptable. You know the one that is not acceptable? This one. Every other one, is, it's cool. It's cool. But this one, it's not cool. This is the problem. And that's why we are actually not the problem. We are the solution. We have the solution. We have the answers. Because Jesus is the answer. He is the reason for life. In him we live. In him we move. And in him we have our being. God is going to make some of you wealthy. So that you will have resources to design structures. Don't be excited by a $200,000 salary because, oh, look at me now. You have not even started. It's not your salary. It's going to open doors for some of us to have such grace and ability to apportion. Uh, 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 See, um, the reason why Satan goes after very wealthy people to get them on his corner is because when you have such wealth, you can build, billionaires build structures. Did you know that? They can destroy and build a structure. Anybody who has over a billion net worth and can do things with structure. Multi-millionaires create the systems within structures. And then I don't need to tell you the rest. Leave it there. Because we're not here to talk about wealth. But I want you to understand that the way the world is going, God is going to anoint people here. And all over the world, they will rise up like Joseph's and Joshua's. They will rise up like Daniel's in their generation. God will give such ingenuity and ideas to Christians and believers to know, just like he did with Jacob in, in, in Genesis. He told him how to multiply the flock. God has not run out of ideas. We are the one not running to him. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run to it and they are safe. He will give us ideas and then we'll know exactly what to do, how to move. And it's coming. There are things that are not yet discovered that God is going to show you and I, his people. And I stand here today and I declare it and I prophesy it over your lives. Get ready. Get prepared. Those of you, I, I, I pray for those who, are, who come in and out here and just say, oh, well, you know, I'm, I come because of my husband. I come because of my wife. I come because my children love it here and all of that. And you, it, nothing, nothing really matters. Let me just give you a promise. It will soon matter. Because very soon it's coming to your doorstep. And you have one decision, one of either decision to make. It's either you go with Jesus or you go with the world. And I'm telling you, I'm telling you, this Bible is not an ordinary book. It's like a movie. Everything has been scripted and we're all acting out the script. That is why it's called scripture. It's a script. And you are acting out a script. Whether we like it or not, the world has a destiny. Humanity has its destiny. The question is, am I going to join and believe that we, there is no controversy. What is a controversy? I want to end it on here so that you get this. See, in the dictionary, a controversy is described as a dispute, especially a public one, between sides holding opposing views. All right. Then it also talks about it being a, a contention, debate, and agitation of, of, of contrary ideas or opinions. I want to say to you that Jesus as Savior of the world is not controversial. It is controversial to those who disagree. Because anyone who is being saved by Jesus and helped, because some of us are saved, we are not yet helped by him. When you are saved, there's a comma. The comma leads you to his help. His help changes your life completely and totally. All right. Then, a mystery. What is a mystery? Did you know that a trade... A handcraft is a mystery. If a drywaller comes in here and you know nothing about a drywalling, about dry, it's a mystery. A painter comes and wants to paint a horse, they start from the tail. You wonder what he's doing. Then he paints the eye. What? And then hoofs. What's wrong with him? It doesn't make any sense. It's a mystery. Because he's skilled. In his mind, he's finished the painting by starting from the tail, going to the eyes, and going. He's measuring equidistant positions to bring the painting together as one big puzzle. You don't see it. It's a mystery to you. 
That is why it's a mystery to the world. He calls it a mystery, not for you, but for those who do not understand. Godliness is the most important resource on the earth. Because after Adam fell and Eve fell, godliness became scarce. And so Jesus came to reintroduce godliness into the world. Praise God. You and I can now walk godly because of Jesus Christ. Are we perfect? No. But we have him living in us, helping us to become what he wants us to be. Friends, I want to encourage you today. There's no reason to be afraid. There's no reason to be worried. If we don't say these things that are in scriptures, if we don't point to what is, people are losing their faith because they see what is happening in the world. It's like, man, all these things, and where is God? Why did God allow this to happen? I wish they would go to a place where they are taught and the Bible is related to what is happening. Did I relate the Bible to what is happening in the world today? Yeah. No, no, are you sure? I just, just don't, don't, don't say that because you like me. Uh, do this. In some countries, this is yes, and this is no. I hope you know that. But you've got to. Friends, this is, the Bible relates to everything happening today. We can see it. And Jesus warned us before time. So we are not going to lose our faith in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I want us to pray today together. I want you to join me in prayer. I want you to make a declaration that God, I will follow you till the end. I will not lose my faith. Please stand with me for two minutes. Let us pray together today. Let's take a moment to pray. And we're going to pray for our children. You are going to pray using your own mouth, please. Open your mouth and pray in whatever way you know. And say, Lord God Almighty, by your special grace, I will not lose my faith. I will not go away from you. I will not leave you alone. I will follow you unto the end. Like we sang earlier when Shailene was leading and the worship team. We sang earlier, I will follow you. I will follow you. Teach me to follow you. Show me how to follow you to the very end. Please open your mouth and pray where you are standing or seated. Pray together with us today that we will not lose our faith. We will stand our ground till the end. The Lord will help us. The Lord will help you. The Lord will help me. Yes, Father, we will not lose our faith in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I want you to pray and say, Father, open my eyes to recognize the deception in the world. Open my eyes that I may recognize the deception that is in the world. Any deception, wherever they are coming from, north, east, west, and south, Lord, open my eyes that I might recognize deception when it is happening around me, when it's happening in my family, when it's happening anywhere in society. God, open our eyes that we may see and recognize deception for what it is, oh God. We will not be deceived. Thank you, Heavenly Father. And I want you to pray the last one and say, God, uh, let me know the truth. Uh, let me never misunderstand the truth. Uh, let the truth become my home. Uh, hallelujah. Let me know you. Give me divine encounters, oh God. Uh, I need a divine encounter with you. Uh, I will enjoy divine encounters with you uh, every day of my life, oh God. Uh, let me recognize you. Uh, let me recognize the truth. Uh, let me never go into the world uh, or out uh, into the lies. Uh, let the lies never overtake me, oh God. Uh, I thank you uh, and I praise you. Pray for our children. Pray for the little children that the Lord will protect them. That the Lord will keep them. Our young adults, our, our teenagers, that the Lord will keep and pro protect them. God, I pray today that you will keep our children. You will keep the teenagers. You will keep the youth, oh God. I pray for the marriages. Pray for the marriages in the church. That the Lord will keep our marriages in the name of Jesus Christ. That we will not go and divorce over nonsense. That we will not disagree over nonsense. That the love between husband and wife will grow in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, that the anointing of the Holy Spirit will rest upon the marriages. Hallelujah. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Blessed be your holy name. We give you all the praise. We give you all the glory. We give you all the honor. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Blessed be your holy name, O God. We give you praise. Let's give the Lord a round of applause. He's worthy of our praise. He's worthy of all glory. Hallelujah. Well, the Lord bless you. Please, you may be seated in Jesus' name. Amen.